Hello friends and welcome to this video on brain tumor segmentation using UNITR in TensorFlow. UNITR is a specialized architecture for medical image segmentation. It utilizes a pure transformer as the encoder, focusing on learning sequence representation. It captures global multiscale information crucial for accurate segmentation. The encoder joins directly to a decoder via skip connections. This form a unit like structure producing the ultimate semantic segmentation of. Now let's take a simple look at its architecture. I already have a video on the implementation of U unit R in both TensorFlow and PyTorch. For a more detailed discussion, you can watch that video. Here you can see a simple overview of this architecture. And here we are working on 2D image segmentation. So everything in this video would be with the point of view of 2D image segmentation so here we have our input image we first uh, pass it via some layer and make a linear projections after that we add positional embedding into it and we have embedding embedded patches after that we have this transformer encoder block which contain layer normalization multi add attention again layer normalization mlp okay and it combinedly form a transformer encoder and we repeat this block 12 times we take uh, output of each block okay and we take output of the block third then block six block nine and block twelve okay and we apply decon layer on each of these blocks and appropriately concatenate them and form a unit like decoder structure ultimately we get our output so this is how it's gonna work and in this video we are going to utilize brain tumors segmentation data set and use this architect so now let's move on to the coding part first of all we'll start by taking a look at the data set itself so here is our folder is named brain tumor segmentation and inside it we have images and mass and each of those folder contain near about 3064 items now we'll take a look at these samples and all these images are resized to 512 by 500. Now we will take a look at few masks. And here you can see the masks are also resized to 512 by 512. So you can directly use them without resizing because both of them are resized properly. And here you can see this white patch indicating the tumor in the brain. So this is a binary segmentation task. Now we will take a look at the files. Here you can see we have these four files. So first we have metric.py and it contains dice co coefficient which is uh, then used to calculate the dice slope. Next we have our test file which is blank. We need to write code in it. After that we have train.py and here we are going to write the code to train our unit R for brain tumor segmentation. And finally we have our implementation of unit R for 2D image segmentation. And again, I'll recommend you to watch that was uh, the video of unit R implementation. I'll provide the link for that video in the description. You can watch that video after this. So what I've done. Okay. Let me just uh, give you a simple overview. So first of all, we have our input here. This is our input. Then after that, uh, we have patch plus position embedding. So this is our patch embedding. Then we add position embedding to it after that we have our transformer encoder and we have our skip connection information in this okay after that we have our decoder so initially the problem with this unit r is that it only works properly with the patch size of 16 by 16 but i've made few changes in it and here are those specific changes so i've written few lines of code to accommodate different patch size now let's say our image size is 512 by 500. Let's assume number of layer 12 hidden dimension this. Now we'll move on the path size. So by default it works on 16 by 16. Now we'll try to run this. And see if it's working or not. Okay so the name of the file is unit r 2 d Okay here you can see it's working. Now we'll change the path size. Let's say we'll change the path size to 2. You can see a drastic change. Now let's run this code again. 
can see it's again working now let's see your path size is equals to 256 this is really large path size but still we're gonna run it you can see it's working perfectly with any path size even if you say path size is one it's gonna work without any issue now here you can see I've changed these parameters such as hidden dimension MLP so you can uh, update them according to your task but for this demonstration I will specify simple configuration so this is about the project structure and the data set now let's start with the training part so first of all we are going to import all the libraries and function we require for this task and here you can see we are using tensorflow as our main library here you can see we have few callback from the tensorflow which we'll use while training we have optimizer that is adam and sgd we have our train test split to split our data set into training validation and testing and here we have patchify a library to convert images into patches next we have imported unit r model then we have dice loss so these are all the libraries which we would require for this task so first of all we will have a unit r configuration so this configuration would contain image size number of channel number of layer hidden dimension multi-layer perceptron di di dimension number of it so i have the specification you can change this according to your task okay Now we'll have few more functions. So our first function would be create dir. So what this function does, it's going to check whether a specific path or a specific folder exists or not. If that does not exist, then it's going to create that folder. So this is really simple. So we're going to use this function to create a folder which is going to, which is going to be used to save our wait file next we have a function called load data set okay so this is our function load data set and it takes the path so this path basically refer to our data set path that is brain tumor segmentation to download this data set you can check the description i have provided the link for this data set okay now first of all we are going to load images and the path okay here we have some error yeah so let's go back to our function so first of all we are going to load both images and mask here this x re refer to list of images path y refer to list of masks path so first of all we have our path the path would be data set path then images folder and inside that we're going to say star dot png so this basically means is it can start with any name but it should end with dot png and same with the mask so this way we have our path pattern then we use globe library so what this library does it extract all the images and mask for us and after that we sort this list so we get a sorted x and y that is sorted images and mask here you can see we have sequence of name one two three four so so that both the images a list and the mask list contain respective images and mask on the same index position so let's say on x list 0 it contain 1 dot png so on y list index 0 it should also it should contain 1 dot png so both contain respective images and mask okay so this is the part where we load the images and mask now we're going to split the data set into training validation and testing and for that we use train test split so first of all we'll calculate the split size that is what is one percent or point one not one percent that is ten percent of this data set so what we'll do we'll allocate eighty percent of the data for training and rest twenty percent would be equally divided between validation and testing so first of all we'll take x that is list of images and split it into 90 and 10 that is 90 percent would be allocated to training and remaining 10 percent would be allocated to validation and same we do for the mask training mask and the 
validation mask and here we have our function train test split we gave it list of images or mask we get splits we give it test size which is equal to split size that is number of images then random state 42 so make sure for both your image and mask your random state should remain the same and same way we split the training again into training and testing so th this way your training would contain 80% of the data and rest 20% would be distributed between validation and testing. Okay, now we'll move on to the main function. First of all, we're going to seed the environment just for the reproducibility. Next, we're going to create a folder called files and this folder would save our weight file and other csv file next we have a set of hyperparameters again if you see above these are also hyperparameters which we have specified but for e easiness we have simply add them all in a configuration dictionary and here we have our batch size equals to 8 I have a GPU that is RTX 3090 and it can accommodate this batch size, maybe even greater than this. But you can uh, set this batch size according to your G G G G G GPU. Okay. So maybe your GPU can accommodate a batch size of 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. So set it accordingly. It may sometimes cause you an error. And this error is indicated basically by OOM. OOM refers to out of memory error. So this means your batch size is big you need to decrease that batch size or you can decrease the parameter of the architecture also so both way it going to solve your problem next we have our learning rate that is 0 0.1 after we have after that we have number of epoch as 500 okay this we have set so high but our training is going to be stopped by using the early stopping fallback okay so this 500 does does not mean we're going to train it consistently for 500 we have a check mechanism to stop the training next we have path for our weight file that is model path next we have path for our csv file so this csv file would store basically the training loss well loss learning rate and other metric during the training now what we'll do we'll load our data set is using the function which we have defined so let me short uh, this path so this is brain tumor segmentation now let me print the training images mask and like this for the validation and testing now let's run this code and see for any error okay now you can see the 80 percent of the data is equals to 2452 images and here you can see validation contain 306 and same number of images are in the testing set so my split is 80 10 10 you can change it accordingly maybe you can go for 60 40 60 20 20 or you can go 70 15 15 so this is up to you i mostly prefer 80 10 10 for easy now we'll work on to the data set pipeline so first of all we'll have our function called read images so what this function does it's going to take an individual image path that is just an image path not any list so first of all we are going to decode that path because that path is going to be encoded and we're going to read this image as rgb i know these images are grayscale but still I have a habit of reading all the images as RGB because sometimes when I use a pre-trained network that is ResNet 50, VGD 16 or any other, they are mostly built for RGB images. So number of channel in RGB and grayscale is different, which causes conflict. So I have a habit of making them read as RGB. Maybe you can read it as grayscale also. It does not matter. Next, we're going to resize the image and after that we gonna normalize the image pixel by dividing it with 255 so initially the value of pixels the pixels are in the range of 0 to 255 if i did divide them by maximum pixel value their range was decreased to 0 to 1 okay so this is how we normalize them now if you remember we are working with unit r and it does not take 
images completely it take patches now we need to convert everything into patches so first of all what should be the patch size okay what should be the height width and number of channel for an individual patch and those are patch size patch size because both height and width in our patch and image are same so mm -hmm. the, the, that's why we specifying a single value patch size by patch size by number of channels if we go above our patch size is 16 next we are using this patchify function we give it the image we give it patch size and after that we give again patch size so this here patch size basically indicate the steps let's say from our patch size is 2 so from 0 1 this is one patch size after that after how many steps it should start the second patch this is what it meant next we're going to reshape the patches to the specific patch size all these calculation how they are done are specified in the implementation with so don't worry about it that is really good video on how this thing work how a normal image that is height width and number of channel is transformed into patches then we change the uh, data type of patches to float 32 and we give those patches back so this is simple now we're going to read the mask again we have a path for the mask we decode it we read the mask as grayscale, we resize it and we divide it by 255. So now, because this mask only contains two things, that is a white uh, tumor and black background. So black value is indicated by 0 pixel and white value is indicated by 255. So what we do, we divide it by 255. So when 0 divided by 255, it became 0. And when 255, it divided by Two five five. It became one. So in directly, we are converting it to zero or one. That is two specific class where zero indicate background and one indicate foreground or the tumor. And we also convert its data type to float thirty two. Now we expand its dimension because still here its size is image size by image size. Okay, and we add a channel to it at the last. So it became image size by image size by one. Now we have a function called tfparse which is going to use both these functions. So this is the function tfparse. We take x and y and inside this we have underscore parse x and y. Inside it we read image and read mask and give both of them. Now if you see we are using functionality which is outside the ten tensorflow that is opencv, patchify, numpy. Okay. So you cannot directly use this function inside tensorflow so what you need to do is that you need to call a special function called tf.numpy and inside that you're going to write the name of the function which you want to call after that you're going to give its input and then that written data type now we get the x and y that is output of this parse function which inside contain read image read mask so we set the shape for these x and y and we get our x and y now we have our last function for our data set pipeline so here we have x and y basically list of images and mask path we have a batch size default value 2 here we are using tf.data api and we give it a tuple of x and y after that we use our tf parse function tf underscore parse function to process the data then we set batches and we prefetch some batches in advance and we give it back so this is the complete process of this data set pipeline now let's create data uh, training data set and valid data set pipeline giving it training x train y valid x and valid y and a specified batch size now we will work on to the model Then we call our model and we compile it by giving loss function loss is equals to as dice loss then optimizer. Maybe we also had this metric called dice coefficient. We can import this also here. And what we can see matrix as dice coefficient. Maybe also accuracy. 
so we have two matrix file training you can see next we have some callbacks so first we have model checkpoint so it is used to save the state file after that we have reduce alarm on plateau so it decreases your validation loss by factor that is point when specified here when for a continuous of five epochs your well loss does not decrease next we have csv logger so this is basically a csv file okay csv underscore path where your training loss well loss training dice coefficient well dice coefficient training accuracy well accuracy and learn learning rate is stored so that after training you can analyze it and last one is early stopping let's say for a continuous of 20 epoch okay your well loss does not decrease so what is going to do is going to stop the train so this is what it do now we are on our last function that is model dot fit we gave a training date data set number of epoch validation data set and callbacks now what i'll do i'll simply run this and training would start so let's just run it for one epoch because i've already trained it for a few epoch and i'm going to use that wait file okay let's wait i'm hoping there should not be any error you can see we do not have any error and it's running successfully like this so let's me let me run it for one epoch only after that we're going to work on the test.py file where we're going to use our test data set and predict and compare them with their ground row you can see so we're going to close it you can see the values improve from infinite to 0.94 and it saves the wait file so let me close it and now I'll sh I should show you so here you can see we have files folder inside we have this s.f5 that is model for the wait file then we have logger.csv and here you can see it has epoch accuracy dice co co coefficient loss learning rate validation accuracy validation dice coefficient validation loss so these things are recorded later you can use this file to plot the different charts now we'll start with the testing part and in this part we're going to use our trained model and predict the mask and compare them with the ground now we'll start with by writing all the libraries which we require after that we'll have our unit r configuration we can copy the same configuration from the train.py because this configuration or this set of hyper parameters should be same in both training and testing. Oh, one more library which we need to import is create dir. I will start with the main part. So first of all, again we gonna seed our environment with the same set of numbers. After that, we gonna create a folder called results, and in this folder we are going to save our ground truth prediction and image. Just basically for comparison so what we're gonna do we're gonna concatenate all these images in a single image for easy comparison now we're gonna load our architecture using this weight file and we have used two custom object that is dice loss and dice coefficient next we have data set path okay let me change this so till now it should work what i'm going to do i'm going to run this till now if we have any error it's going to show us otherwise everything would be fine so things are fine now what we're going to do we're going to take take our text test images and test mask and we're going to loop over individual images we're going to read them process them and predict mask and save it so we're going to do like this this is our loop let's go okay so this is our loop so we have zip because we have two list so we have set test x test y and then we have eqdm that is the progress bar and we have x and y that is item from test x and test y so x refers to image path y refers to mask path so i'm going to break that loop here 
because I don't want to repeat it again and again until the complete code is done. So first of all, we need a name from this x or y, any. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to print both x and y just to show you what they look like. Because this is important, we need to extract name from it. Okay, so th this is the path. So this path can change. One thing you need to remember is that your name would be the last thing in this string. Okay, so both the names are same. We can use any one of them. So we're gonna say name equals to x dot split. And if you see, this string is separated by this simple slash. So I'm gonna paste it here. But if you are using Windows, this slash would be different. It should be something like this. So just remember to print the path first, then put the slash. Now this would be a list of item. I'll show you what it looks like. You can see brain tumor, images, and name. So name is always in the last. So what we can do, we can simply say my. For now, let me just comment out this because this is unnecessary and it would take time for the code to execute. You can see we have got the name along with the extension. This is what we need. Next, we're going to read the image. Now, this time we have a single image. And this is the code. This is this code is exactly same what we have done here in this uh, read image. Okay. So we read the image as RGB, we resize it, we normalize it, then we convert it to patches. Now, because this is only one image and the input we give to the model is in the form of batches. So what we have done, we have, we have expanded dimension at the starting of this. So it would be a batch of one image only. Now we print the shape of these patches. What I'll do, I'll before this and after this. So you will notice the difference. So I hope you can see that difference now. This is the patch and this is a batch containing only one patch. You can say a batch containing only one input image. Input, not image. Now we're going to read the mask. Same. Read it as grayscale, resize it, normalize it, and expanding its dimension. Okay, because we have this image x. Remember, we have this image and a specific dimension, and we are going to concatenate both image, this mask, and the prediction. So, what we do, we expand its dimension on the last axis and concatenate these masks on top of each other. So, so that they have same number of channel as in the input image. Now we're going to make the prediction. What we do, we say model dot predict. We give it patches as the input verbose equals to zero. And because it contain only one image, one input, it also going to give one mask. So, so that's why we say index zero. So we get that mask. And we also concatenate that mask. Let me comment it out, comment this part and let me show it to you. I think that would be much better. Grid dot shape. Let's execute it. Okay, okay, one big mistake is now we need this. So you can see this prediction. So the, the, this is our mask and this is only one item. Please so see at index 0 we have our mask because input is 1 so output would also be 1. If you have 2 input then it's going to give, give you 2 mask. Now we again concatenate upon each other to make sure both both the mask and pre prediction has same num same number of channel in the image. Now we need to save this image, mask and the prediction. So first of all, we have the simple line. 
okay let's move on to this cat image so first we have image separated by line then we have mask and then we have a prediction so line is basically a thin line separates image and mask and mask and the prediction so this is done now let me execute this code because now we are breaking the loop so it's going to work only for first time and it's okay we have results folder and you can okay if i forgot to replace this wait file so you can see the prediction of the model which only trains for one epoch now what we'll do i'll replace this i'll copy it file and replace it here this files folder and now we're going to remove this results folder we're going to run it again Okay, so we're gonna move. Okay, so this time you can see both the ground truth and the prediction now looks good. In the previous case, you can see the prediction looks really, really bad, but now it resembles to that of ground truth. So in this image, we can easily compare the, the ground truth and the uh, prediction along with the input image. Now, what we are going to do. We are going to remove this break statement from here and let everything run. So now you can see the advantage of using a progress bar that is TQDM. It shows you how many iterations are done out of total number of iterations, how much, how much time it's going to take okay, and the speed that is how many iterations showing per second. So this makes it really easy. Now we're going to see all the test images. See, in some cases, it's not able to predict. So this means its performance is up to it's not that much. So what can you do to improve this performance? So first of all, you can play with this configuration. You can change it accordingly. What is specified in the original unit arc paper? Okay. You can add data uh, argumentation in it. You can train it on more number of epoch. You can increase the image size. Specifically, increasing image size would help. Okay, so you can do, do all these things to improve the performance. That's all for this video. I hope you really enjoyed it and learned something from it. And if you did learn something from it, then please make sure you subscribe the channel, like this video, and share with this video with your friend. Okay. And if you have any question, please email me. I usually try to answer as many email messages or any other query as possible okay and sometimes i may not answer them because some time or, or what to say sometimes i'm mostly i'm busy with other work because this youtube is not a full-time thing or it does not pay me well okay so that's why i need to do other things also so thank you have a nice day